So for this class, what we're going to do is that I've given you three quest two questions to peel, which is, these are past paper questions, right? Uh, which is to explain three political measures taken by Fidel Castro, which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban revolution. And also to ex explain the economic reasons, or sorry, the economic measures taken by Fidel, which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban rebel. So our first group that is going to go is group A. Sir. Go ahead sir, for me. Do you remember last year when we asked you if we have to go first? Like every time I said that we're not going to go first the next time. All right. So I'm going from bottom now. W. W. Britton, Lawrence, Samuel, and William. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, tell me when you're ready. Jody, are you going to read? Jody. Jody Ann. Someone else who has the uh, Jody and Sarah background is noisy. Anyone from the group? Somebody from the group, move along for me, please, quickly. Okay, sir, I'll just do it. So this is um, 11W, and the group members are Jody and Brenna, Britton, Jelani, Samuels, and Brenna Lawrence. All right, good. Sir, why not moving? You open this this slide. Yes, sir. You have you have control over it. Yes, sir. I'm not sure what happened. So, these are political measures taken by Fidel Castro in 1959. Fidel dismissed most of the senior government officials in which he replaced them with a new ministry staffed by men loyal to him and the revolutionary, the, the revolutionary movement. Castro also reformed health and education diplomacy. He sought to the training of Cuban doctors to in turn disperse them in Africa and Caribbean countries to help. He provided health care for Caribbean nationals. A more political measures, a strong diplomatic bond was formed between Cuba and the Soviet Union, called, which is now known as Russia, by the help of Fidel. Under his leadership, Cuba was divided into provinces as the citizens of the country were granted the right to vote for the municipal representatives in their respective province. Economic measures taken by Fidel in 1959, he insinuated the 1959 Agrarian Reform Act. This allowed the lands owned by Americans to be seized without compensation and to then be made the, profit, the, profit, the property of the Cuban government. More economic measures. During 1959, the government's policies were nationalized in Cuba. Companies were switched from a private ownership to a state ownership in the sense that the state ownership now benefits and not only tourists. 
interveners were appointed to monitor U.S. companies such as Cuban Telephone Company and the com com or Compiania Cuban, sir, that word, and ensure that they pay their taxes. The interveners also ordered them to improve and extend their services and cut their charges. New trade agreement, Russia signed. Russia agreed to buy 5 million tons of sugar over a five-year period and granted Cuba a loan of 100 million at an interest rate of only 2.5%. So, so um, for this one, for the economic, for the economic measurements, we expanded mm -hmm. on the health and educational diplomacy. So Castro reformed health and educational diplomacy. He sought to the training of Cuban doctors to in turn disperse them in African and Caribbean countries to give aid. While in Batista's dis diplomacy, the healthcare system Oh, sorry, sir, it's political. So this one is the political, sir. So he's training of Cuban doctors to in turn disperse them in Africa and Caribbean countries to give aid. While in Batista's diplomacy, the healthcare system totally diminished for the Cuban people. Batista was very selfish in his reign and he paid little to no attention to what was, to what was not aiding to better him financially or to make a higher ranking. As such, for the common Cuban citizen, the ratio for doctors to patients was vastly unbalanced. As such, Cuba began to be plagued with diseases such as malaria and yellow fever. When Castro seized control, his first line of action was to raise the literacy rate from 35%. He built a number of schools on the island to combat the issue and was successful in, in this endeavor. He went on to train these persons to becoming associates in the medical field, which in turn, which in turn, sorry, that's the wrong word, which in turn rose to the no, rose the number of doctors that were working in Cuba. This was very beneficial to them, the, beneficial to the Cuban citizens, especially the poor members, as they now had access to a proper healthcare system, to which was also free of cost. In totality, Castro combated two major issues hindering Cuba from greatness. In just a short span of him gaining political control, he changed the lives and livelihood of Cuban citizens. More than Batista, more than Batista did in his entire reign. He consequently paved the way for Cubans to become more self-sufficient with these two reforms, which in turn aided the nation as its people is a representation of how great the country is. All right, before you move on, if you, if, if you are in the exam and the exam, the, you are in the exam and they ask you to discuss three political and two social, uh, two political and two social effects of this Cuban revolution. What would you discuss for the, just list the points for me and list two of the social that you would discuss. You're in the exam and they ask you to discuss three, three political and two social. Um, sir, for the political, I, could probably um, state that um, Batista was a puppet president, and uh, answer um, the U.S. and say, state something about the the military, sir, that had to do with the U.S. military. All right. Uh, what would you what would you put for your social? Sir, for social, could I put about the high mortality rate? Effects. The effects of the, 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 the mortality rate, sir. 
Remember, the question is asked. Well, the question asked. Look at the question. Explain three political measures taken by Fidel Castro, which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban revolution. Explain to me what the question is asking. What is the question asking? Artist. Sir, can you repeat the question you're breaking up? The question, you have the question. Oh, okay, sir. Is the question A? Interpret the question. Tell me what the question is asking you to do. Sir, to, to state three political measures taken by Fidel in terms of him helping the Cuban government to be better. All right, what do what you mean by, what, what the question means by measures? By measures, sir, meaning things that he did. Very good, excellent. So the question now is basically asking you three political things that Fidel would have done, right? Yes, sir to ensure that the revolution, the Cuban revolution continues, right? This is after it would have be, uh, overthrown both the US and Batista. So what are the three measures now? Political measures. Political is you are not the only one in the group. Samuel, you are the one who's talking, right? Yes, sir. Well, where are the other group members? Sir, they are here. Group members. Williams, even though you have noise in your background. Lawrence. Brianna Lawrence, you are here. Britton. Sir, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. What are the three political things that they would have put in place? Um, he put in place new housing. Is that one? When political. Call. Oh, sorry, sir. That's social. Never mind. Um, so wait. I like what you just said. So, if they're going to the exam and they ask you about three, three political and two social, what are the two social you're going to discuss? You mentioned one before. You see, he um provided housing. So you're going for, to discuss housing. Yes. yes. And another social is that he trained a lot of nurses to nurses. aid. Very good. And you could expand that because you can say medical workers. Right, sir. So you discuss those two. What are the political now? Political have to do with what? When you hear the word political, what comes to mind? Government. Government. What? happen politically okay so i remember i read this in the less you forget sir he dismantled batista's government and he brought in his own um what do you say he brought in his own his own form of government with his um his own people his own men to serve right. the government. Well, what his government was called um I don't remember. All Sir, right. Go ahead. Sir, I was asking if he's communist. Well, you oh, sir. Oh, sir. I remember. I remember. Castro's Revolutionary Party. So they had the, not the Castro's Revolutionary, but the Cuban Revolutionary Party. Government. Right? Our party. Yes, sir. 
So you will need to explain now to the examiner what was the Cuban Revolutionary Party or the Cuban Revolutionary Government. What else political change would have happened? Um, the agrarian reform law, sir. Agrarian, agrarian would have been is is uh, is agrarian political, social, or economic. 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 Agrarian would be economic, so policy you need to political. So you that you finished with one already. You mm. need two. So both of you what and then the, the next thing with this presentation was that you didn't peel the well, you tried to peel the first part. Well, I've seen where you tried to do the peeling, but it wasn't clear enough. I didn't see the E. I didn't see the two E's, I didn't see the L. All right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you, this group need to go back to the drawing board. All right, sir, no problem. As a group, and you need to meet together and answer the question, because this question is a very, very popular question on the exam. Okay, sir. Next group, E. Wait, sir, question. Are we going to present again? No, you're not going to present again, but I need, you need to do it and send and it send to me. Purpose. Okay, no problem, yeah. sir. Okay, sir. So I'm going to share my screen. And yeah. So this is um, the Caribbean History Option C 11E group. And we're presenting the Cuban Revolution based on the contributing political and economic measures that Fidel Castro put in place. So Fidel Castro once said, a revolution is a struggle to the death between the future and the past. All right. Done, oh, whoops, let's go back. The overview, the Cuban Revolution was an armed uprising in Cuba that overthrew the government of Fulgencio Batista on January 1, 1959. As a result of the Spanish-American War, control of Cuba passed from Spain to the United States on January 1, 1899, and it was governed by direct U.S. military administration until May 20th, 1902. Cuban leader Fidel Castro, 1959 to 2008, established the first communist state in the Western Hemisphere after leading an overthrow of the military dict dictatorship of Fulgencio Batista in 1959. He ruled, oh, by the way, that's not his date, his date of birth. That is like from when he ruled to when he stopped ruling. He ruled over Cuba for nearly five decades until handing over power to his younger brother, Raul, in 2008. Castro's regime was successful in reducing Ill illiteracy and and improving public health care, but was widely criticized for stifling economic and political freedoms. Question one, explain two political measures taken by Fidel Castro, which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban revolution. So. Okay. I'll read, so just open. In order to maintain the survival of the 1959 Cuban- that one went away. That wasn't supposed to happen. Um, All right, there it is. In order to maintain the survival of the 1959 Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro had to take many political measures. One of these measures is establishing an, a provincial government le legalize, <laughs> legalizing the, the Communist Party, bringing forth a new direct idea of a classless Cuba. Kyle. Kyle, I'm trying to read. Can you know? Okay. I'm sorry, that just switched out for no reason. I don't know. Bringing forth a new direct idea of the classless Cuba, Cuban allowing a centralized political party and public ownership of productive property. In April 1959, Fidel Castro went on an 11-day tour of the United States to meet President Eisenhower to gain financial support. As Castro's goodwill mission failed to elicit any financial help from the United States, and, soon, and he soon turned to expropriation, forced lending, new and heavier taxation, and exchange control, 
urban Cuban constitution, the National Agrarian Reform Institute was established to pay for all lands taken over with 20 year bonds. Inconvertible, un inconvertible until maturity, paying 4.5% interest with payments derived only from tax revenues. These measures, these measures secured financial protection for the Cubans as everyone was now on the same playing field. For example, as equal as possible. A program of expropriation of all land holdings exceeding a thousand acres, four square kilometers, regardless of the owner's nationality was written into an agrarian reform decree prom prom promulgated on June 4, 1959, as part of the Cuban constitution. The National Agrarian Reform Institute was established to pay for all land taken over with 20 year bonds, inconvertible until maturity, paying 4.5 5% interest with pavement payments derived only from tax returns. These measures secured financial protection for the Cubans as everyone was now on the same playing field as equal as possible. In addition to the enforcement of agrarian reform, Castro was also strategic in strengthening his ties with the Soviet Union. In 1959, the Soviet Union and the United States were in conflict, so he decided that since he could not get any support from the US, that he was clutching that he was clutching onto the Soviet Union in an effort to gain financial support and strengthen their relationship, which would aid in Cuba's fight to independence. Castro's courtship of the Soviet Union began shortly after the revolution with a visit to Havana by Soviet Vice Premier. Anastas Mikoyan. As he took on the United States, he knew he needed the Soviet protection in order to survive. The Soviets played a cautious game but could not pass up an opportunity to gain a toehold in the Western Hemisphere, 90 miles from the United States. Mm -hmm. At the end of Mikoyan's visit, the Soviets agreed to buy Cuban sugar in exchange for Soviet oil. The United States, already concerned with Castro's anti-American rhetoric, saw the agreement as a betrayal and asked US companies in Cuba not to refine the Soviet crude oil due to, leaders budding, due to the leaders' budding relationship. The concept of communism was set ablaze in Castro's mind, which then affected his political decisions in Cuba. I became a communist by studying capitalist political economy, and when I had some understanding of that problem, it actually seemed to me so absurd, so irrational, so inhuman, that I simply began to elaborate on my own formulas for production and distribution. It is- One second, ladies, before you continue. I don't know if I am following closely to the presentation. I don't think so. The points, they are all over the place. They are not developed properly develop. And I really don't know what you are saying in regards to the question. I don't think you understand the question. And that's the fact. What are your three political, the three political changes that would have happened? What three political reforms that Fidel would have put in place. Sir, he, he turned Cuba into a communist state as well as he formed relationships with the Soviet Union. Um, so very, well, wait, 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 wait. So you're in the exam. So your point would be, so your point is that your point would be that one political effect of the Cuban revolution was, what is it? What is it? That he turned Cuba into a communist state. One, polit one political effect of the Cuban revolution was the transformation of Cuba into a 
communist state. You need to explain or give examples what is what you mean by communism. What example or evidence is there that it was a communist state? What do, what do you mean by communism? That's a big word. What do you mean by communism? Basically, he, he made a new government, a provincial government making the Communist Party legal. So he, he made it so that everybody was on the same playing field. So even though like everybody was doing a different profession or everybody was doing something different, they all... I wouldn't say earn the same or they all live the same, but they were all on equal playing ground. So anything that happened in Cuba, everybody was supposed to like know about it. And anything that was owned like by different, like like say the United States, so, like they own certain land. So they took back that land and they made it so that everybody like, the, I don't even know what the word for it is but everybody owned the common productive grounds so like it wouldn't be it belonged to cuba and nobody else all right so there's a problem that i'm picking up there's not there needs you need to go and do some research on what a communist state is and you also need to do some research on socialism right political effect. Your second point is that one political effect would have been also that Cuba uh, had a close relationship with the Soviet Union. Very good point. So both of your points are correct, but your development of those points are flawed. And so what the group needs to do is that you need to go back to the drawing board and you need to look at the political effect because you don't want a case where you're in the exam and they ask you about political and social and you end up discuss if what you're talking about political changes, you're also discussing the social. Your paper is going to be all over the place. And that was the reason for this activity, to see how we can refine our writing. So this group need to go back to the drawing board. You need to meet together as a group. And you need to see what are the political effects, what they would have done, how he would have changed how people would have operated in the, in the country. Did he stop elections? Did elections continue? continue? If elections continue, how did it continue? Political have to do with governance, how the country was governed politically. Who were the leaders? How the leaders were selected? Those are things that has to do with political. Economic is how the economy operates. Social has to do with things like health, education, living, living conditions. And so this group, you need to go and do the work. All right? Next group. Noted, sir. Next group, which is R. Beckford, Blake, Trissell, and Hemmings. Go ahead for me, please. Sir, my fan is kind of loud. Is it like... No, we are not hearing your fan at all. Okay, sir. 
Well, ready, Haley. Three political measures taken by Fidel Castro, which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban Revolution. The point we found is that Fidel Castro got rid of, his, of the corrupt government that would have been under Bat Batista. Mm -hmm. Examples in the month following the March 1952 coup, Fidel Castro, then a young lawyer and activist, pet pet petitioned for the overthrow of Batista whom he accused of corruption and tyranny. During Batista's very high and, sorry, during, during Batista's dictatorship, poverty was very high and healthcare and education was very poor. Unemployment was also very high and living conditions were deplorable, given that there was no running water or electricity for many people that lived in rural areas. For explanation, Fidel Castro chose to hire revolutionaries. These were individual, individuals that would remain loyal to him and Cuba and approve of his policies. Some of these individuals included Royal Castro and Ernesto Che Guevara. Fidel Castro gave his new loyal men authority to dismiss senior government officials and replace them with new, with new ministries. Link, therefore, the riddance of corrupt government was a political measure taken by Fidel Castro, which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban Revolution. All right, go ahead to your next point. Okay, I guess I'm continuing. Yes. Three, three political measures taken by Fidel Castro which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban Revolution. Point. Fidel Castro found new ways for Cuba to become more involved in American-owned companies. For example, Fidel Castro declared that all property owned by Americans belonged to the Cuban government in 1959. The revolutionary government took over Cuba's telephone companies Bands, railroads, port facilities, cinemas, and hotels in 1962. Would that would would you say over Cuba are the American owned? Repeat, sir. Would you say Cuba's are the American owned? You, for your example, you said the revolutionary government took over Cuba's telephone. Oh, I understand what you're saying. Um, I feel like that's an error because it, I believe that it would actually, actually be Cuba who would have eventually taken back control over these things. All right. All right. Good. Good enough. Continue. Explanation. In March 1959, the Cuban government began to install interveners who oversaw operations in several American-owned companies. By doing, by doing this, the Cuban government had an upper hand as a government. Therefore, the cutting of ties with the U.S. was a political measure taken by Fidel Castro, which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban Revolution. And now oh, here Wait, before you continue, but just to give the examiner a little more uh, background information to the cutting of times, would you not include how the U.S. would have responded to the how the U.S. responded to the yeah, the Cubans? Um, yeah. This is good enough, you know. This is good enough to give you the three out of three. This is good enough. But I would also, this is my view on it. I would also discuss this point that the Americans did not want to want any ties with Cuba also. So, sir, could you say that prior to prior to Cuba becoming a communist revolution, the relationship they had with the U.S. was good because the Americans would like flock the beaches, resorts, and other parts of Cuba. But no, we don't want we, we don't want to get in that. What I want to get in when the Americans when the Cubans took over the American owned company. How did the American uh, react to that 
over. You understand where I'm coming from? Yes, sir. So you'll be able, so that would be part of your explanation. Once they took it over, how? Because they said in March 1959, the Cuban government began to install interveners. When those interveners were installed, how the Americans reacted? So that is the part right there. You could put in one or two lines right there at the end of government to explain how they would have reacted why the Cubans had to cut ties. Okay, sir. Agree with me? Yes, sir. Very good. Go to the next one. Very good so far. Haley will now continue. Go ahead, go ahead for me, Haley. Okay, sir. The next point. Fidel Castro declared himself a communist in 1961. Examples. After Fidel Castro became dictator of Cuba, he implemented new policies in hope of restoring Cuba. Some of these policies included better education and healthcare systems, along with equality for black, blacks, women, and as they were now able to receive better education and, and jobs. Ex explanation. A communist is a person who believes in ideas of common ownership of the means of production and the absence of social classes, money, and the state. Oh, sir, I forgot to mention from before, um, we only peeled the first two, the first two measures, sir, because we thought that we were only supposed to explain the first two, but we still gave the third measure, which was this one. All right, no problem. You can move on to uh, this one about Fidel Castro declaring self communist. Very good point. The explanation of communism, your example is good because you said that he uh, became a dictator. I disagree with the term dictator, but that's in there in the narrative. Uh, the explanation is, you start to explain what is, uh, who is a communist, mm -hmm. and they talk about common ownership of production, but communism also include that you, you for example, like how oh, you have Jamaica that has two political parties. You have the PMP, the JLP, that's a democratic society because people are able to choose between two political parties. In Cuba, you do, really do not have a opposition. So it is just one political party in Cuba, which is the Cuban Revolutionary Party. Right? So basically, they still have elections in Cuba, but you only vote for members within the party. You are following what? You are following the reforms? Yes, sir. So, for example, like the US, recently the US had an election and you had several different political parties going up for government to, to, to be elected. You have the Republican, the Democrats, the Green Party in Jamaica, you have the PMP, the JLP in Barbados, you have Barbados Labor Party, the Democratic Labor Party in Trinidad, you have PNM and all of these different parties. But in Jamaica, in Cuba, once Fidel took over, only one political party was recognized. And that was a Cuban Revolutionary Party. And that's one of the one of the tenets of communism. It is a one-party state, not two-party state, but a one-party state where members of the country, everyone who is part of the country, they vote for members within the party. Do you remember when the PMP had their elections the other day? Yes, sir. Yes, and yes, sir. During, during the PMP election, everybody in the country were able to vote? No, during, sir. Who, on, who could vote in that election? Like, um, mm -hmm. I don't know what they call them, sir, but like some special people, sir. Like if you so, so only persons who were members of their party could vote in the election to, to select their president for the party. 
it is the same way in Cuba, where only people from the revolutionary political party, only members of that party, they are able to vote to select the president and the president basically runs the country. So there is no outside party that people can vote or uh, alternative. There's no choice that is there. All right, so this here, I know, yes, I said two, but you can fix up this one because it, this point has been, you are developing this point. Well, you just need to put in that part of it. Let us see the, ex, the economy, how you deal with the economy. Go ahead for me. Three economic measures taken by Fidel Castro, which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban Revolution. Point, the implementing of the agrarian reform law in 1959. Examples, the ownership of land was closely monitored. Cuba, Cubans were no longer allowed to own more than 400 hectares. Excess land was also taken by the government and used as compensation for bonds issued in Cuban currency. Explanation. On May 17, 1959, the Agrarian Reform Law was passed. This law was designed so as to undermine the U.S. as an other foreign ownership by eliminating renting and tenancy of land. U.S. sugar companies stood to lose over a million and a half acres of land because of this law. As a result, Cuba began to profit more, while the U.S., on the other hand, was losing revenue. Link. Therefore, the implementing of the agrarian reform law in 1959 was an economic measure taken by Fidel Castro, which contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban Revolution. All right, let us to the next one. Another economic point was Fidel Castro establishing trading links with USSR. The example for this is the USSR bought sugarcane from Cuba. In addition to buying sugarcane, the USSR also sold weapons to Cuba. The explanation, after ex establishing a communist government, Fidel Castro went on to establish trade links with the USSR. As a result, Cuba was able to abolish capitalism and nationalizing of all foreign-owned enterprises. By forming this trade link, Cuba was now able to eliminate the middleman, otherwise known as the U.S. Cuba no longer had to rely on the U.S. to buy their sugar cane and supply items such as weapons. This meant that Cuba now had a new source of income, the USSR. Link. Therefore, the establishing of trade links with USSR was an economic measure taken by Fidel Castro, which cost contributed to the survival of the 1959 Cuban Revolution. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Excuse me, sir. And in case no one know what, knows what USSR means, it means the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. All right, very good. Very good, ladies. Very good, excellent. Ladies, from the other two groups, this is how you peel. Perfect example of the peel approach. You show your P, you show your examples, you put your explanation, you link it back to the question. Now, if you should remove the, the point, the examples, the explanation and the link, you get a paragraph. And so if you go into the exam and you write this paragraph and it is uh, nine, the question is out of nine, then for this point, you get three out of three because everything is there. Your point is there, your examples, your explanation, and your link. So clearly, you, the examiner must give you three out of three for your points. That is how you develop your paragraph. So ladies, this group has done a very good job in showing the, showing the peel approach and in answering the question. Now, when you use the peel approach, it helps you uh, to answer the question, the specific question that was asked, and also to eliminate you from your points being all over the place. 
So when I, when, I when the examiner takes up your paper and they looks at your paper and they see, because once they are marking, they are looking for PL. They're looking for your point, they're looking for your examples, your evidence, and all you link it to the question. That's what they are looking for. All right. So the next three groups uh, you present tomorrow, not tomorrow, Thursday. So on Thursday, the other three groups will present, and the other two groups before, please make the adjustments to the to your PowerPoint. Redo the work. It wasn't done well. All right. Enjoy the rest of the day, ladies. You too, sir. You too, sir.